Hello, hello. It's great to have all of you. Look at this full house. So exciting. All right. It is my pleasure to introduce uh, my friend, uh, mentor, um, the amazing Phil Palin Hall of Famer. Mm -mm. Let's start with that. Hey, friends. Mm -hmm. Happy Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, that was a bit weak. Come on. You can even admit that. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it is so nice. OK, that's the energy we want. It is so nice to see all of these familiar faces. I'm excited for this session. We're doing this session. Yes. Yay. Maybe we should start with where the idea for this session came from. Will you go for it? Let's hear it. I don't want to reveal our big secret, but we do brunch occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> on average, I'd say every month and a half, we get on each other's calendar. It's and great. this literally started as a conversation of Kathy saying, Phil, how has your career evolved with social media? And what do you think that looks like nowadays? So this started literally as a brunch conversation to then thinking, oh, this would make a great session at Hall of Fame. So here we are with all of your beautiful faces. So today we're going to talk about social media, which evolves very quickly. The advice that we would have given you a year ago is totally outdated. So we're not going to spend, I think, the minutes we have today to talk intensely about the nitty gritty of social media strategy. That's for you to figure out and stay on top of. But we will reflect on the role of social media the way that this can be used as a, as a tool, as a skill set, to get into those dream organizations, careers, and opportunities. Sound good? Yeah! Cool. That's it. All right. <laughs> so I have put together a little game for us. Hopefully, you'll be able to see my slides here. Put together a little game, a little crossword to keep you paying attention. We sat, we reflected, and I thought, what are the most important words as we reflect on this, the, the, the role of social media and the opportunity that exists for you to get into your dream career. So we'll start with the first word of our crossword. And that word, I think, is something we all have in common. I stand on this stage. We stand on this stage. And it's been a few years, OK, since I've been here as a student. Every Hall of Fame, that date gets farther and farther. <laughs> You're here right now, right? And, and I think different degree programs. Who do we have? Shout out which degree you're from, just so we can. <laughs> wow. It's, it's a rowdy group. I kind of like That's it. A, yeah, it's kind of like a fun it. day. <laughs> so we got different degree programs here. But the one thing you all have in common is you either know what you're passionate about or you're in the process of discovering that. And that is super cool. Give yourselves a round of applause, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So you. <laughs> We're all on this journey at, at every point of life, figuring out what is it we absolutely love to do. If you've ever attended some of my sessions here at Hall of Fame or at Full Sail, you know I talk a lot about this. It is my dream, my wish, my mission in life to help you ideally land a, a, a job, a career, an opportunity that's built on something you're passionate about. And that's really the through line of what we're talking about today and the place that we should start. Now, if I'm really going to be fair and show you where this started, it wouldn't be to give you a highlight reel of all the you know, fancy and famous people I've worked with over my career. I think it's only fair if we start at the very beginning. <laughs> you, may not, you, 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 guys, you guys may know some of my stories. You won't know all of them. I saved a few, a few <laughs> that I'm dusting off for today. It, this is a photo of me, uh, my first job. I was in high school. Not your average high school job, but I hosted a kid's show in Canada. Put, your, put up your hand if you're an international student, by the way. I was one of you. Canada counts as international. <laughs> so this was my first job. And in fact, the story starts even before that, when I found out about Full Sail. That was me with quite a hairstyle. In Adorable, right? <laughs> in high school, I discovered Full Sail, and it always kind of stayed in the back of my mind of that place where I knew I wanted to go to not only start a career in entertainment, how exciting, but also get to America <laughs> is really, you know, what it meant. I discovered Full Sail actually when I was like 13 or 14 at an international school fair. 
I had the opportunity to be a part of a reality show for kids in high school. I did two seasons. The first season, well, the show basically had the premise they took students and teachers and swapped roles. I was one of the students that was a teacher. I taught pop culture, okay? <laughs> With that hairstyle, I don't know. <laughs> Season two, I came back as the vice principal, but actually hosted the show. That for me was the moment where I realized I knew that I had to work in entertainment. It was so exciting, not just on camera, but also being a part of the storytelling, the behind the scenes uh, aspects of this. And that's, that's really how it started. So went through high school, stayed in Canada for my undergrad, full sail remained in my mind throughout that degree. I thought Canada's great, but the United States is really where you want to go to build something, especially in entertainment. So came down with my mom to Orlando, where I was used to vacationing. And we rented a car, visited Full Sail. I enrolled in uh, Entertainment Business Masters 2010, graduated 2011. This photo was right around the time that I was graduating when I was applying for jobs and internships. <laughs> At that time, one of those opportunities I had applied for was a very visible uh, internship search for the actor Charlie Sheen. 90,000 people around the world, including me, entered to become his intern, his social media intern. Obviously, at this time, I'm dating myself, but social media was relatively in its infancy. We're all still trying to figure it out, including him. So we thought, I want to hire a young person, you know, to help me get a, get a grasp on this. Very long story short, out of 90,000, I made it to the top 50. Full Sail supported me in a huge way. That was me in the studio filming my little reel for the third round of the competition. Again, questionable hairstyle. <laughs> that was my headshot. Very glamorous shot. I, right, right, <laughs> yeah. I did over 100 interviews, uh, TV, radio, print, this landed me on, uh, featured in the entertainment section of the Toronto Star. Mm -hmm. While I was pursuing this opportunity, this internship uh, that got me lots of interviews, uh, I also had an opportunity through a connection at Full Sail to intern for Ryan Seacrest. I was set to be his first digital media intern at Ryan Seacrest Productions. I was fired before I even started for generating too much media. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. What? Yeah. So the VP <laughs> called me, uh, and I was one week before graduation, and mm -hmm. he said, Phil, are you sitting down? I was like, no, why? I'm at Universal Studios celebrating I'm about to graduate. And he said, I have bad news. You're in all of these you know, Google alerts today. No one here knows who you are. You've already created so many problems for us before <laughs> you even start. So unfortunately, you're fired. <laughs> so still kept my plan to move out to L.A., that was right around my very first Instagram post. So it's just to prove to you that I was not an expert in social media from the early days. Look at that beautiful, <laughs> beautiful work of art, a window with a filter. <laughs> I found my community, I would say, or my, my niche or niche, depending on how you pronounce it. For me, TV hosting was what I knew. It was my first job. It's what I thought I wanted to pursue when I moved out to LA until I realized there were a hundred other people lined up for those TV hosting gigs that would pay well, but last three weeks, and then you were unemployed again. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I don't think I'm gonna be able to pay rent, at least right now, reliably with this as a career. But I love the people and I love the industry, so I thought, why don't I align myself with these people and help them build their brands and their social media? Very powerful decision, because it meant that I was no longer vying for the attention of gatekeepers and important people in the industry as someone who wanted a hosting gig, I became the person that people would call when they had questions about social media, which is what I really went all in on, teaching courses. That's a photo of me with the green screen background teaching a workshop on social media. That's the first time I was invited back to Hall of Fame. It was, I think, two or three years after graduation, my first panel. I was so nervous. Mm -hmm. Look at my little Hello, I'm Phil Palin. <laughs> and it's really, it, it's incredible because I realized even though I wanted to host, I put that dream on the shelf mm. and thought, what can I do right now that's practical that people will hire me for? Social media, right? Companies, we're still trying to figure this out, particularly people in generations that hadn't grown up with this, trusted me Again, in this room, is, you guys are probably more social media proficient than me because you use it every single day without even 
being super conscious of that, right? But in that moment, that was something that was a skill set that was needed. And it got me in the door. It got me having conversations with really important people that otherwise wouldn't have given me the time of day if I was an aspiring TV host. One of those people, bless her heart, Robin Raiden, texted me at 6 a.m. on a Wednesday. It was so random. She says, Phil, have you been following the Kardashian story? And I replied right away. I said, I have. It's, isn't it crazy? So I sent that back. And then I was like, <laughs> then actually looking to see what the story was because I had no idea. <laughs> she said, great, you know the story. I know you don't drive. So call an Uber, hop in, come over to the studio. We're going to interview you as an expert, a subject matter expert, and put you in the lead story on Access Hollywood tonight. <laughs> tonight. So, tonight. Oh, so wow. tonight. So I had to be there within an hour. And that's how long it took from Santa Monica to Studio City at seven in the morning. Mm. I think it actually took longer. So once I got there, did a quick interview. I was nervous as hell, <laughs> right? But I had at least had an hour in the car to research what the story was all about, spoke with authority, did the interview, walked to the elevator, and she said, wait, 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 Phil, I forgot to ask you, what's your lower third? What do you want to be known as? What's your title? And in that moment, I said, I am a celebrity brand expert. And from that moment, if you Google celebrity brand expert, chances are you'll see a handful of people, including me, it led to interviews with all the top major publications, including CNN. Uh, I continue to get media. It's not as much of a focus for me anymore now that I'm traveling and I'm not in LA to do shoots, but that was the moment. That was the moment. This all came full circle. Uh, I've been speaking. I've delivered keynotes on five continents. I posted my first YouTube video in 2020. Pandemic hit, the time that I would spend before flying around on airplanes, I had to create content. And I thought I should dust off the old YouTube channel and create content. That's what I tell you guys to do every time I come back on campus. I better do it for myself. So about a year later, maybe less, I had an email from a brand called Adobe. Heard of it? <laughs> they said, Phil, we love what you're doing on Instagram and YouTube. We'd love for you to try our platform at the time called Adobe Spark. And I thought, oh my God, I'll do anything you say. It's Adobe. <laughs> Gave it a try, put a lot of time and effort into my, at that time, my first piece of sponsored content. They paid me to post on Instagram and YouTube, which began a whole campaign with Adobe that's now going on over two years. I'm a global ambassador for Adobe Express. I travel the country, travel the world, do virtual trainings, on-stage trainings. Very proud to be aligned with that brand. And this was last year. I thought I'd just slide that in there when I was inducted. Yeah, to remind induction you. You that into moment? the yeah. Hall of Fame. Um, that was a year ago. And then now, I, uh, Adobe is my biggest brand partnership. Last year, sponsored content, social media. As a pillar of my business, I hit six figures. And this vertical did not exist three years ago. So I don't say it to brag. Thank you. Yeah. I don't say it to brag. I say it. I tell this story, the highlight version of it, the highlight reel, to hopefully inspire all of you to make this tangible. You're all here. You're, there's a million places you could have been, but you decided to spend your valuable minutes with us today, either in person or watching online or watching back the replay. This is real. This isn't something, you know, particularly social media as a tangible skill that started a decade or two ago. This is very fresh and new, and that's why I speak with such enthusiasm and passion about this, because this is real. Social media as a skill set, something that you already use and do to communicate with your friends, is actually something that can get you in the door on your dream career. Last picture is just me sitting in my home office now here in Baldwin Park, half a mile away. And a big part of my job now, I obviously I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, but the bigger part of my job nowadays is creating sponsored content with over 60, I think I'm probably at 70 brands over the last few years. So passion, that's where we start, but it's not where we finish. This is where we plant the seed. All of you are here at Full Sail exploring, reaffirming what that passion is. But I think you'll agree with me, Kathy, that it's not just passion mm -hmm. that it takes to succeed. There's also need, right? You need to satisfy a need. You need to really be listening, exploring what opportunities exist out there.
for you to get in the door. Every time I talk about branding, it's, it's passion, something you love, paired with something others need and are willing to spend money on. This is really important, Phil, because a lot of times, you know, I work with students a lot and we, there's not a student that come, doesn't come to Full sale without some passion, mm -hmm. but it is the like, and what? Um, and so we really appreciate that and the need. And what does that mean? Yeah. Hopefully you're all thinking about this. What is that thing that I'm passionate about? Where does it intersect with a need? I see you guys writing down. You're thinking. I see those <laughs> deep thought moments. I've got another story for you. This week at Hall of Fame, you're going to meet Hall of Famers. You're going to hear stories about when they were a student and what they've accomplished over the years. I thought for this example, I would actually pull some recent examples of success. In fact, the next example I'm going to give you is someone that is still a student. I want to tell you about my friend and actually my contractor, Brian. One year ago, I was shooting with Stephen Barris, who we all know and love, uh, the Hot Wing Challenge. I don't think they've released my episode yet. That was brutal, by the way. You had to eat these hot wings and they increased in flavor. And I was fine, I think, for the moment. At least I put on my brave face. But about two hours after that, I was keeled over at the Alphon. <laughs> I looked like I was embalmed because I still had my makeup on from the last session. I was like, I literally think I'm going to die. <laughs> you had to eat them while having a conversation. While having a conversation. Right. It was brutal. Yeah. This guy was working, or I think he was volunteering to be a part of the shoot. He came up to me and said, Phil, you don't know who I am, but my name is Brian, and I'm going to intern for you. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. thought, well, that's bold. I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. So kept in touch. Obviously, I couldn't hire him on that spot. I had never hired an intern from Full Sail or from anywhere. Having been in the position of trying to get those opportunities, I'm especially sensitive to ask someone to do work, even if it's educational and not get paid for it. I will never do that. And I explained that to him. I said, I don't really have time to teach you what you need to know in an internship, you know, in an educational capacity but show me your skills. What can you do that helps and complements my business? And it's hard, but he pulled out his Instagram and said, I came from the film program, now in entertainment business. This is some of the content I created. And I went, wow, he's incredible as a photographer. He's got a little bit of that film background, was curious about content creation, curious about you know, business and learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that pretty much within that moment, I hired him and we've worked together for over a year. Brian is still a student at Full Sail. So he comes over here, he's in the military. So he comes over here, does his classes. We shoot at least once a week. I've flown him around with me to conferences to shoot and create content. And I'm determined to get him hired for his next opportunity <laughs> this week on campus because that's the kind of relationship that we've built. So I thought it would be fun to hear from him directly, right? A student who is in your exact position to hear what advice he has to give you. Now that I've stolen Phil's throne and I'm the <laughs> king in this empire, advice that I could give is to do the research, do your homework on, on who exactly you're about to approach. If, it, if you're about to send an email or, or s slide into someone's Instagram and pitch them you make sure that you're pitching them with practical tangible skills that you know that you have you know Larry Katz always tells the students and I, I kind of listen from the next door over and he says don't tell them that you will do anything tell them that you will do the thing what is the thing that you know that you can do because if you tell them you can do anything then that that tells the person that you don't know what the thing is so know the thing, know the practical skills that you can take to the table or to that person or that business or that company that you're trying to improve. Know exactly what it is your tangible and practical skills are so you can pitch those skills to that person. Give Brian a round of applause. That is great advice. What do you think about that advice? I think that is passion plus need equals opportunity. There you go. That. Perfect example. I love that. I have a few more examples coming from recent grads that I think are going to inspire you. We're going to continue playing this game. So our little crossword, mm -hmm. passion, need. Let's keep going. Brian actually said this in his clip, probably because I've drilled it into his head for the last year. 
I remind Brian the reason that I hired him, I didn't give him an internship, I hired him, was because he brought tangible skills, concrete skill set, practical skills, whatever you want to call it. This is super, super essential to open that door. The theme of this session is, is really just a reminder that a lot of those entry-level opportunities right now are in marketing, they're in social media, they're in content creation. And by the way, you're not just limited to job postings out there. I would make an argument that if you have a strong portfolio or you have what we would call proof of concept, you can show up at a company and say, hey, here's what I can do for you. I took a look at your website or I looked at your Instagram. I have ideas on how I can help. I, didn't, I wasn't looking for an intern, right? And Brian presented his skill set to me and, and what he offered was something I needed. And that, ta that the tangibleness, that's the noun. I didn't have enough boxes for that on screen, <laughs> so I just put tangible. Uh, that was really what got him that opportunity. So I want all of you thinking in this room, watching and thinking about this, I want you all thinking about what are those tangible, those practical skills that you have. Shout out to the MCBS program, by the way. Should we okay. give them a shout out? <laughs> yeah. I know we've got a lot of people in this room from that degree program, but um, I think that is an amazing, I mean, every degree program is amazing at full sale, but particularly with social media and content creation, you guys really, keep it practical and tangible. And that is awesome and in need. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, there is so much opportunity, not just for MCBS, Media Communications, but other students. I know there are film students, obviously, Brian and others. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the shout out. Oh, you get a little mm -hmm. shout out. I know we got a lot of people here mm -hmm. in the room from MCBS. So let's keep going. We're playing our little crossword. The next word is a tough one. It's tricky because it's just the reality of entertainment, regardless of industry. So you'll meet, again, it's my, my hope and wish that you get to meet as many Hall of Famers this week. Most of us come back for this week to celebrate our new inductees. But all of us will tell you, regardless of industry, how competitive the entertainment or the media industry is. It's just the reality of it. Not everyone on this campus is going to be successful or even going to get placed in a job or an opportunity right out of the bat in entertainment or media. There are not enough jobs. So you need to be excellent. You need to be proactive. You need to be thinking about these words. These are the words I came up with on an airplane without Wi-Fi. I thought, what are the most important <laughs> words that I can leave you with to get you thinking about this? Competition, unfortunately, is one of them. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that is what I see sometimes, and you don't have to raise your hands, but check yourself on this. Do you ever compare yourself to others and say, I'm not there, so I'm going to shut down? I'm not asking you to answer, but I know that's a reality. It's a reality for every human. So hear this as a reality and an invitation to know how to handle the competition. Great advice. And I've peppered in some examples throughout here, so let's, let's learn from another uh, student, a recent grad example. This is my dear friend, Caesar. All right, you guys, and our last viral TikTok that we're going to react to for today's YouTube video is this one by Caesar David. This one has 61 million views and 7.8 million likes. Let's take a look. Monday. Monday. Whoa. Wow, that is so cool. I just noticed too, I love that the caption of this says his mom wants him to go to Walmart and Walmart literally comments on this video. This is so cool, this is absolutely insane. So this is obviously like a snow elf type of look. This is extremely well done. I mean, the face paint is so beautiful, the white brows, the hair is styled so gorgeously, the cool like ice horns. I think he probably made them himself as well. Like such a cool, original, unique, well done take on this. Like it, it's very, very inspiring to look at. Wow, this is super, super cool. Cool. Now you can see why I didn't introduce Caesar. Or let James Charles. Do yeah, the let's let him go ahead and do it. Hey, full sale social media. It's very challenging, and you need to put a lot of time and a lot of persistence and a lot of patience. For example, for me, it was very, very hard because there's a lot of special effects makeup artists out there, and it's very competitive. When I studied full sale, I found and I discovered that I have a passion in special effects makeup. 
Thanks to that, I created my own audience and my own brand. Helping me opening a lot of doors with a lot of brands. Universal, Disney, Paramount, Sneakers, uh, iHeartRadio, Sephora. This takes time and actually you need a lot of patience because you're not gonna create 1.7 million or 2 million followers overnight. If you are persistent, you're gonna make it. And that's the key of social media. I am so proud of him. Give him a round of applause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what makes this even more special is Caesar is in this room right now. Give us a wave, Caesar, at the back. For those of you who are here, thank you so much for being here. You know how proud I am of you. Almost 2 million on TikTok. It's just incredible. Yeah, and this is somebody who started in a film program, saw, had a passion, which was makeup artistry, and then saw a need and went in that direction, right? And even in a competitive industry. Would definitely take a minute to talk to Caesar. as well. Definitely say. take a minute yeah. to say hello to him. What is really unique about Caesar's case, and I'd say I'm uh, you know, in the process of building this for myself, is the power of having your own platform. So it's perfectly viable for you to leave Full Sail, graduate, and get a job placed within a big company. Could be a dream organization, or maybe it's something to pay the bills for now that gets you in the right city, if even you know, to be having those conversations and those opportunities to build relationships. But there's another option as well. If you are particularly skilled and passionate about something that you can share on social media and build a community, build an audience, build a platform, essentially, he's built his safety net, his parachute for the rest of his life and career. And that is incredible and super, super inspirational. So let's keep playing along. This next word I think is really exciting and I'm gonna keep it very simple. This word is tools. When I tell people about graduating from entertainment business, I sometimes joke, it's a little less exciting, right? You study film or <laughs> animation or video games, right? At, at Full Sail, I was like, yeah, I study entertainment business. How do they even market? It's like a boardroom, you know? <laughs> it's like, how do you make that exciting? But I realized in hindsight, actually, a few years out of Full Sail, the power of this program, MCBS being very similar. Sure, we didn't have the glitz of the back lot and all this equipment and fanciness, but I had a laptop that I had as a student. Specifically, I had a MacBook Pro and I had a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. Those two things were the tools that I needed to create my business. So I needed two things, my computer and my brain. <laughs> That is all I needed to start my business. Every student gets to leave with those two things. Exactly. Yeah. I literally, that's, and I would say, I would add one more thing that was unique to me. I needed a suitcase because oh. I love to travel. <laughs> <laughs> and the beauty of this, studying M MCBS or, or entertainment business, potentially landing a career or a job that you can do remotely, now far more popular after the last few years than before, you might be in the same boat where you're operating more on deadlines than actually showing up in a particular place physically to deliver your work. So it's just a little reminder that for many of you, this is all you need to start in terms of tools. Obviously, there are some exceptions. If you're shooting, you might need a camera, you might need some equipment. You don't need all of that right out of the gate. Work with what you have. Set milestones for yourself so you hit a certain monthly revenue goal, let's say, or a financial goal, and you hit these goals and you invest back in you know, better equipment or a, or a better setup. This is gradual, right? Every, every Hall of Famer, every grad that comes back and reflects on their success, all of us will say this did not happen overnight. You have to start somewhere, and the best way to start is with what you already have. So that's a little reminder for you when it comes to tools. We're moving right along. Let's get our next word. We're going to scroll out here. This is the last word to complete our crossword, and we will shortly open this up to questions. So get your questions ready. Those of you in the room as well, I know we've got people watching online. We've got moderators keeping an eye there. The last word that I think is absolutely essential, I just hinted at it, patience. The importance that this is not going to happen overnight. 
And to tell this story, I have one more grad, recent grad, that I'm going to feature today. One of my favorites, I have to say. I know he's also one of your favorites. Oh, yeah. This is Yvonne. And here's what Yvonne has to say. Is this thing on? <laughs> Hello there, Phil and Kathy and everyone in the audience. My name is Ivan Emilio, and I'm currently in Colombia right now filming something super fun with Telemundo. But Phil asked me to be a part of his panel, and I had to do it I, from wherever. So I'm currently in my hotel room doing this. But... I'm sure you've learned everything from Phil today, but if I had to add my input, which he asked me to, I just want to say that patience and persistence is key, but also start now. You want to host a show, start a podcast, write a book, do it yourself. We're in 2023, people. We got all the resources on our hands. You know, I started as an intern for the Daily Buzz while I was still a student on campus mm -hmm. and I had my own YouTube channel. And six years later, I can say that I found my dream job at BuzzFeed, hosted multiple shows and red carpets, interviewed the hottest stars, mm -hmm. heck, even traveled the world doing what I love. But also it's important to find a support group that believes in you and that pushes you forward. And right here in front of you all is part of my support group. <laughs> Phil has been a mentor since my very first Hall of Fame as a student. And Kathy Craven <laughs> has been my fairy godmother throughout oh. all my career <laughs> since day one at Full Sail. So they're stuck with me forever. Those are the types of people you need to help you not give up on the hard days. Because there will be hard days. But we're not going to talk about those today. <laughs> anyway, I'm here for you all. Go use social media. Start your business, do your thing, don't give up, don't listen to negative comments, and I'm sending you hugs and lots of good wishes your way. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> give him a round of applause. Yeah. Our final example wow. today. I'm mm -hmm. very, very proud of you. I didn't let uh, you see that so, clip before I wanted to I cry. I know, you surprised <laughs> me with that. Funny story about Yvonne, quickly. He's a student here. He was in the, I believe, the first campus class. I-V-A-N is his name. So we all called him Ivan almost all the way through his, his program until he created a video on his YouTube channel that was really fun and peppy that said, hey, everybody, my name is Ivan. <laughs> and so that's how he let us know. And he will always be remembered that way. That An amazing, so amazing guy. You guys, those are three that just came to mind. I have 10 others, grad, probably more, over the years of students that I literally met sitting here, probably in this room, coming back. And I can't wait for you to be those grads that I feature in upcoming presentations when I have even more gray hair. <laughs> um, I think it's an important reminder as we round this off and head into Q&A, patience. Again, you'll see the, you know, the highlight reels of, of what so many people have accomplished since graduating Full Sail. You're only getting a snippet into those worlds, right? It's inspiring, but also remember that that's not, that's not the full picture. We all start somewhere. As Yvonne mentioned, there's going to be low moments. That's all part of it. Um, Patience. It's a marathon. It's more of a marathon than it is mm -hmm. a sprint. And it's just, a, I think, an important reminder um, as we round this off. I say, how about we open it up now to Q&A? We've got probably 15 minutes or so. Uh, I'd love to answer. We can answer mm -hmm. any questions that you've got. Okay, we're here. Go ahead and stand up. The mic will turn on for you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, hello, my name is Rasha, and my first, my one question is, um, when is enough enough? I'm an artist, and I also produce, I engineer, I do all the instruments. I've been teaching myself how to do, like, play the electric guitar, but I just recorded a music video, like, about two weeks ago, and I stayed up for night, for hours, and just watching, like, footage and content, trying to, like, watch, like, films and stuff like that. When do you think, like, enough is enough, like, to, I guess, move out of your, because that's something I learned the first, the first day at um, Full Sail, that you won't always do what you started with. And when you, with you guys, I, you over here, I loved your story that it was about, that you over here moved, you weren't in like the same place and you had to like change your point of view. When do you think, when was the, when would, did you feel comfortable enough to like sit in what you really wanted to do, your passion, I guess you would say. It's a really, really good question. So, I don't know that it's ever enough. I think you're always going to be on this pursuit of 
whatever industry it is, potentially building your portfolio. Let's call it that. Maybe that's kind of how I would sum it up across different industries, jobs, careers, and degree programs. I think you're always building your portfolio. You're also always building your self-awareness. This is something we are all working on, mm -hmm. particularly in the digital age, where we juggle two versions of ourselves, the in-person experience and the online version of ourselves. Personal branding is really the art of achieving consistency between those two things. And so I don't know that there's ever a point where you reach that it's enough. I think you're constantly exploring. You're aware of what you're passionate about. You're aware of where there's a need for you. I love that you're in this zone of, I would call it curiosity, right? Trying different things and, and grinding and figuring out what it is you love to do and what it is your, your, your passion is. Pairing that with uh, the opportunities that are out there that'll get you hired, I think is really super important. And I would actually just say um, tangible skills to bring it back to that is a lot of times the advice I give on questions like this. What is it that you have very tangibly in terms of a skill set that someone will hire you for? Because when someone hires you, they're investing in you. They're paying you money in the form of a salary or some kind of rate for a gig. And the idea is, I'm paying you, and you're, in return, giving me value. And so, really, that's business. That's mm -hmm. a tr business transaction in the simplest terms. But getting hired is exactly that. And so, you're, I want you to continue thinking about this really exciting place that you're in, which Full Sail gives you an amazing opportunity to discover those passions and keep being curious about where there's a need for you. So, even... Even if you're not ready to apply for jobs, read those descriptions. Find out where, at what companies, what are they looking for, and how you can start to think about what would it take for me to deliver value in that role. And I think that's the right mindset. I think that's, you're, you're already doing the right thing by, by exploring that and staying curious. Great question. All right. Uh, my name is Xander. I've I, my biggest social media is YouTube. I've uh, I do other social media, but YouTube is my big one. My following has garnered to like 1.25k. My question is, I've I used to do on camera stuff, but now it's more like I'm I'm all voiceover. Have you ever noticed a difference in success if someone's on camera or not? Oh, great question. I wasn't expecting this question. I like it. YouTube also happens to be my focus. <laughs> I like it a lot more than, oh, yeah. uh, honestly, I like it a lot more than TikTok. Uh, TikTok's not my favorite, but it is a necessary evil right now in terms of uh, increasing your discoverability or, or growing a platform. If you want, if you have questions about TikTok, you better talk to Caesar in the room, yes, not me, right. okay? <laughs> YouTube is also my platform of choice. Um, I would say, it. I, I think actually to bring up TikTok, I think it is, um, it's putting less pressure on the necessity for high production in content creation. I'd say YouTube, it's appreciated still if you have that higher production. I can tell you from brand deals, even as a smaller creator, smaller being I've grown, I'm at around 30,000, 31,000, and it grows not huge, but consistently. And it's enough that I'm able to do deals with brands. Um, I can't promise virality, for example, but I can promise high production value in what I create. That's something I can control. But I've even found uh, it doesn't matter so much about whether I'm on camera the whole video. In fact, the rhythm I'm in right now, my workflow for YouTube, is I will write an intro and an outro, and those are pretty standard. I've done 250 YouTube videos in three years. So I post twice a week. So I have a I have a process and I have a certain pattern that I have down that I could do with my eyes closed, backwards, upside down. <laughs> but I use the opportunity to plan the video, to also uh, script out a few sentences that I think will set up what will be a screen record. Uh, and that rhythm is working really well for me. So uh, let me give a quick example. Uh, here are five updates on Instagram this month that you should really be paying attention to. So I, at the time of recording that video, if that's the intro, I might not know what the updates are. So I will literally just film me saying a few sentences that I think will tee up something that I think is going to be an update. 
Let's start, with the, let's start with the first update. Everyone is talking about this right now. Check this out. I don't even know what it is at the time of filming, but then I go back, and when I do a voiceover, I say something that will connect the thought. This is what I want you to check out. So they just changed this, blah, blah, blah. I use the same microphone, but I'm in my pajamas. It's at any time of the day, and it's usually a week or two after I record the, the initial video. And I find by having myself on camera a few times throughout the video, even if it's somewhat generic, it keeps it flowing and connected versus just being all voiceover. At the same time, there are many successful channels that are voiceover only. And I will say voiceover is a lot easier to record and to record quickly. Uh, I do a lot about social media and updates, for example, on platforms. Um, you know, now you know my secrets, I just revealed them. When you see me in the middle of the video, I'm like, oh, this next thing, this is crazy. Check this out. I don't know what you're checking out <laughs> at the time I record it. But I do that just so that it flows and you see my face throughout. So um, I don't think it's one or the other. I think you continue to iterate, experiment, and land on what you enjoy and works for you in your process as a creator, but also pay attention to performance. It's really important to log in once or twice a month and really give yourself permission to dive deep in the analytics. It's ugly in there. I hate it. I like all the glitz and the production and the filming, but the analytics really give you the keys mm -hmm. to what's working and what you can continue to tweak. That would be my advice. Anyone who's got a microphone? We can't really see. Oh, yeah, over here. Let's do it. Yeah, thank, thank you. I have uh, Carrie Thompson from YouTube in the Game Art program asking, what are some common social media mistakes that you see when it comes to branding or portfolios? Ooh, mm -hmm. you're going to have thoughts on this, too, I bet. <laughs> you start. You want me to start? OK, so common mistakes. There's lots of them. The first one that comes to mind is feeling like you need to be everywhere all the time and splitting the limited time that you have as a student or as a professional across 10 different platforms. This year, and, and, and even more so into the future, you do not need to be everywhere. You can't be everywhere well. It's too time consuming. So I'm giving you today permission to not have to show up on 10 different platforms. In fact, the advice I used to give was, instead of being average on 10 platforms, be a rock star on three. Mm -hmm. I've changed that even since in the last few years. Even better than being a rock star on three, be a superstar on one. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Caesar, who's in the room, would be a great person to talk about this. I would say, Caesar, you're a superstar on TikTok. And when you reach superstardom, then, and really only then, should you look at expanding in a bigger way to other platforms. He and I chatted a few days ago. He mentioned that he's now on Facebook. And now in his content creation process, as he's making a TikTok, he's thinking about where else he's going to show up and recording those assets needed to either put the same content or in many cases slightly different because everything's a little bit different per platform. But to start out, honestly, if I were you, I would go all in on one platform Try to build proof of concept as quickly as possible. If you can really figure out what it takes to grow quickly, you can start to do brand deals or you can make money through ad revenue. And that's going to give you the ability to then build out your support team faster. The only way that I can show up twice a week on YouTube is because I have a lot of people that help me. I script the videos. I obviously film them. Filming them takes 10 minutes. It's the easiest part of the process. I have an editor. I have someone who helps me shoot those videos because I'm in front, so I can't really see how they look. I have help designing the thumbnails. I have help optimizing the videos with the titles and the descriptions. I basically do the easiest part. <laughs> but I have that support system, and I'm able to hire them because I'm able to do brand deals. So go. my advice would be, instead of being average on 10, you can be a rock star on three, or better yet, be a superstar on one platform. That's my advice. Did you have thoughts on this? Well, yeah, my quick thought, sorry, Antonio, is my heart is with what trips students up, even though I see they've got all the talent, they got all the stuff they need, but they still get tripped up every now and then. So I would agree, if you will take the pressure off yourself, choose one that you're excited about, that's a big key, and that you're ready to fill that need with, look at the crossword puzzle, and be a superstar. Yeah. I'll actually add one more thought to that, and it's quick. 
uh, social media or content creation, it can't just be about the client or the viewer alone, or otherwise you won't sustain creation. There needs to be something in it for you. So I'll give you an example. I will choose titles that I will publish on YouTube that I think and I hope are going to perform well, even though I have no guarantee that they will. But the title is also something that I care about, something that I want to learn more about. And so making a video about it gives me permission to spend the time it takes to research and learn and formulate my thoughts and opinions. Uh, an example would be leaning into AI right now. I have a lot of brands and some that I have done very well with, uh, partnerships and affiliate sales. There's a huge need right now for subject matter experts on AI tools. For me, giving advice on which AI tools make the most sense for a busy working professional. Chat GPT is great, but it takes a lot of time to learn. It takes a lot of time to learn. And so my audience doesn't necessarily have that time. So I'm this summer refocusing, repivoting my YouTube channel to be all about really focused on AI, mm -hmm. even though that was not at all my world before I started content creation. Mm -hmm. Now it's a huge part of it. And I'm leaning into where there's demand, but I'm selfish about the creation and really focusing on content that I can create that's going to fulfill me. Good advice. Hello, Phil. Hello. Uh, <laughs> my name is Antonio Melendez. And funny enough, I kind of have a similar story to Brandon, Army vet, turned film student, turned YouTube partner, then MCBS grad recently as well. Are and you going to try and be my intern too? No, you're too cool <laughs> for that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, feature course director here as well. Love as well. it. So, um, Congrats. But the advice for a lot of people here as well too, I wanted to ask, what would be your advice for someone who feels burnt out while trying to grow their audience and create content for anyone, even for themselves? My advice, that is such a good question. My advice for someone who feels burnout, um, you probably are burnt out if that's what you feel. And you are not going to thrive if you are burnt out. Social media feels like a hamster wheel, never ending. And that is certainly a downside of it. And you need to be self-aware. You need to know those moments when it's too much. And all it takes is, and I would recommend a break, take a break. Uh, if I felt burnt out from content creation, then I would, on it right now, if I felt that, I would probably take the summer off. Does it mean I'll lose out on brand deals? Yes. Is it more important, my own mental health and my own opportunity to pause and reflect on what I actually want, big picture? Sometimes it takes a break. So I am all for, I mean, yes, you'll hear consistency is key and consistency is important, but it's not more important than mental health, physical well-being. Um, that's always paramount. That's always the most important thing. So I think every content creator, every successful content creator can tell you about a time when they took a break, ev even if it was for a few days. Sometimes that's all it takes to just sit, readjust, think about what you want, and think about how you can be selfish about content creation. I think only then, when you actually get more out of it than someone else, than a viewer, that's where it becomes sustainable. I feel very passionately about that. It's, it can't just be about serving others and you know, creating content as fast as possible because you will get burnt out. You need to be very intentional. You need to listen to yourself, be very self-aware. Great question. Hey, Phil. Uh, sorry about that. It's Allison back yeah, here. Yeah, great. Uh, we've hit our time. Amazing. Thank so, you. Guys, thank you mm -hmm. so much for being thank here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.